Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to answer a frequently asked question, mostly so that if anyone else asks in the future, I can just send them the link to this video rather than typing out the whole response. This is actually kind of shocking that it is a frequently asked question, but what I get asked so often is what does a typical class period look like for you? And what I find so shocking is that every single time I observed a math classroom ever, this is exactly what was done. This is what I feel like was always done, what I've always seen. So it's just naturally what I fell into. So here's what a typical period looks like for me. This is probably gonna be a really short video. In my school, a class period is 42 minutes. So we try to maximize that time. We start with a warm up activity. We try to make it about five minutes long and it's like one, maybe two questions that I post for my students to work on, some type of review material usually. Um, the whole purpose is so that I'm able to take attendance. So that they're all working on something and doing something, but it's also good for just preparing them for the lesson. Maybe they need to review something from a previous grade or from something else that we did earlier or sometimes it's just a nice way to kind of like wrap up a previous lesson. I like to do exit tickets but sometimes we run out of time so if we had an exit ticket that we did not get to the previous day I will the next day make it an entrance ticket instead. My cats are acting like maniacs so if you hear background noise that's what it is. I'm trying to film around it but if I keep pausing and stopping for that it's just not gonna happen. So sorry about the background noise. Then we'll go over the warm up on my welcome slide. I have the warm up um, materials that students need. There's an agenda and then there's a spot for announcements. So if we have any announcements, I will go over them with students. Like if there's a quiz coming up, when their homework's due, all that kind of stuff. Then we start the lesson and most lessons are direct instruction. But if we're doing some kind of a discovery activity instead, we will do that first and then I'll kind of go over it again with direct instruction for students that kind of need that. So um, that's what we do next and that is like the bulk of the period. Um, and then direct instruction kind of seamlessly blends into independent practice. So my school is really big on using the gradual release model, which people are really familiar with hearing it as I do, we do, you do. So I'll start with like the definitions that we have in geometry. There's lots of postulates and theorems, stuff like that. I try to make it discovery when I can, um, but if not, we just talk about it. I do fill in the blank notes and that is mainly to save time. I don't want students trying to write everything down because they will. And in geometry, the diagrams, it gets insane. Uh, my first year, that's what I had students do was copy down the notes. They tried to copy down everything. Then they would do the diagram, erase it, try it again three more times. It was a nightmare. So I've always used pre-printed notes since my second year on. Actually, my second year is when we started interactive notebooks, which I have lots of videos about. But my students and I will work through the examples. I don't ever actually just do an example by myself. I will explain an example a lot more the first one. A lot of what we do in geometry is we learn something that informs us how to write an equation and then we solve the equation. Sometimes we will take our solution and find a missing something. So we'll plug it in or substitute back into an expression. We do that like all year long, just learning all different things in geometry. So the first example, I will like explain everything very thoroughly and set up the equation but once it's time to solve the equation my students know how to do that so I'm not going through and like solving the whole equation for them ever. Um, we really start off with we do when we're doing a gradual release model and then I will take the practice that I'd want to do on the topic and it's built into the notes. So we will do the practice there so the first maybe two examples or so we are doing together and then I'll say, okay, so you do this next example. And I will circulate around the room, check in on how students are doing, work with students one-on-one -on -one if they have a question or just want some individual attention or, you know, a lot of times it's usually like they just want some reassurance and not really encouragement, but they just want to know that they're doing it right. So I will go around and do that. 
sometimes lessons are broken down into different parts where we're doing one concept at a time so then I might be repeating that whole process again where maybe I introduce a new definition or postulate or theorem and then we'll do an example together and then they'll do an example on their own. Now this process for our lesson it takes about 35 minutes. I've been teaching this for so many years so the notes are long enough to fill that time or they've been condensed enough to, to fill that time depending on the topic and then the last few minutes of class we will stop and I like to give my students time just to put everything away. We do interactive notebooks so I give them time to add the page to their notes, update their table of contents, and for me the big thing is getting my calculators back because sometimes students will accidentally take them with them and that causes all kinds of problems for my other classes later on in the day. So I like to stop, make sure I get my calculators back and just give them some time to do what they need to do so that they are not going to be late to their next class. Now if we are doing an exit ticket like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'll stop class maybe more like five minutes before we're done so that students have time to answer the one or two questions on the exit ticket before um, putting away their notebooks and whatever supplies we have out and cleaning up before leaving. But that is it, like that's really what a period looks like. We have the warm up, we have the lesson, which is again following that gradual release model, and then we have time to clean up and do a wrap up. Uh, wrapping up a lesson is my least favorite part, like we always have to plan for it, I'm always like, Ugh. like I don't know. Um, I just kind of go through the different slides that we had for the lesson and like recap the main ideas um, with students, and that's usually what I do for a wrap up. So that would be like a typical lesson where I'm teaching something. Now if we are on a topic that is really crucial that students know it well, I will give them a second day that is just independent practice. So we'll start out with a warm up that way we can review the lesson. If I need to review like the main ideas like I would do as a wrap up the previous day. I'll repeat that at the beginning of the lesson. Then I'll give them whatever directions they need for the independent practice. And I just try to look for anything that they might get stuck on and kind of warm them ahead of time. For example, today there was this one question where they get a decimal answer and they're so funny because they're like, oh my gosh, I did it wrong. And it's like something 0.5. Like, nope, you're right. Like that's an you know, that's the answer. And I tell them it's a number. Don't discriminate against it just because it's a decimal. And I'll say the same thing for fractions. Like these are still answers. So um, I'll give them a heads up about anything like that for their independent practice. And then with the time left over toward the end of the period uh, with their independent practice, I will go over any of the most missed questions. So Google Forms are really great because they'll pull the most missed questions for you during the period as students submit their work. If I get asked about the same question several times, I'll kind of stop the class and talk about it with them so that they don't get stuck when they're working on their own. Um, but again, like if there's a problem like that that people keep getting stuck on, we'll go over it together toward the end of class. Forgive me, I'm getting over cold and decided I really just wanted to do this video, so my voice is not quite what it normally is. Now as far as what I assign for practice, I'm actually going to go into details on that in a separate video so that's coming I believe next month but if the blog post for that is already up I will go ahead and link that below but that's everything for this video like I said short and sweet it's the same thing I've always seen so that's just what I do and it works um, what makes it work though is the fact that it's a routine not that it's this specific routine that I use um, if that makes sense it's just the fact that it's a routine students know what to expect when they come in and they're used to how we work so that is everything for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.